Hi guys, so welcome to the first video of our lecture series for structural theory. So this video is an introduction to structural analysis. Here we are going to define what structural analysis is, and then we're going to discuss the different classification of structures. All right, so let's proceed. Great, before anything else, let's define what a structure is. So a structure is a system of connected parts used to support a load or a combination of load. Now, a lot of things could be considered as a structure. For example, we have our skeletal system. So our skeletal system comprises of different parts, different connected parts. So we could also consider our bicycles as a structure. Our vehicles, our cars, as a structure. So anything that is made out of you know, um, connected parts or different members that are connected to each other that are carrying a load could be considered as a structure. Now, with regards to civil engineering, what are the different civil engineering structures that um, we help design and construct? So the most common one is our buildings. So for buildings, we have our residential buildings, our commercial buildings, we have the schools, hospitals, um, our hotels. So those are considered as buildings. And then secondly, we have um, structures for transportation and communication. So under this, we have our roads, our highways, our expressways. We have our airports, um, bridges, tunnels, um, harbors, ports, and docks. What else? Um, for communication, we also have our transmission towers, but this could also be used for electricity. The next type of um, civil engineering structure uh, would be our water infrastructure. So under our water infrastructure, we have our water supply lines. Um, we also have our drainage lines, um, our pumping stations, your treatment facilities, your treatment plants for wastewater and also for our, the water that we get in our houses. Um, what else? We also have infrastructure for irrigation, our canals and barrages. Um, what else? We also have our dams and reservoirs. All right. So the next type of structure that we deal with is for the industrial sector. This is called our industrial buildings so under industrial buildings we mainly have our factories um even the cold storages that we use to store the vaccines that we're using right now could be could fall under industrial buildings and then the next type would be for um, military purposes so this could be any type of um infrastructure or structures that are used by the armed forces and then the last one is the special structures. So under this one, we have our um, power plants. Um, we then have our space uh, research stations could fall onto this um, category. So there we go. Um, we have the different civil engineering structures that um, you as future engineers would help design and construct. All right, so now that you know the different structures that you might encounter as a civil engineer, the next question would be, how do you build those structures? The diagram that you're seeing in your screens is the process that we undergo through when we encounter social engineering projects. So the first phase or the first step, which is the most crucial phase, is the planning phase. In the planning phase, um, it involves um, establishment of the different functional requirements. Let's say that you're planning to build a house. So one of the first things that um, we're going to do is the establishment of functional requirements, uh, such as um, what does your residential building or what does your house needs? So it needs your bedrooms, your kitchen, your living room, your dining room, um, your bathrooms, uh, utility areas, garages. Maybe you want to put a swimming pool or a basketball court in your houses. 
So that would be our functional requirements. The next step is your general layout and dimensions. So how are we going to arrange these different rooms and what are their dimensions or sizes going to be? All right. So the next one is yung, uh, the principal types of structures and materials that we're going to use uh, for our building. So for the possible types of structures, um, what are we going to be, what are the different structural systems that we will be utilizing? It can be your rigid frames or trusses. And then for the materials, the most common materials that we use in construction is your reinforced concrete and then your structural steels. Right? And some other non structural factors might also be considered in this phase. Now, the result of this um, planning phase would be a structural system that meets the functional requirements and also um, economical. The next step would be your preliminary structural design. So in this step, we are going to make um, the sizes or dimensions of your structural system or structural elements. So in this part, it might uh, require some experience for you to be able to determine um, or to make an estimation or an approximation of the sizes of your structural elements, the sizes of your beams, your columns that can carry the load of the structure, right? So you can also use um, the minimum code requirements coming from our NECP. And then the next step is the estimation of load. So this is the estimation of the weight of the structure itself, the different loads that are expected to act on your structure. So for example, in our residential houses, you have your dead loads, your live loads, your rain loads, you have your earthquake loads, um, you also have your wind loads. Now this loadings, uh, we could get this from different codes, uh, which we will talk about on a different video. Then once that we know, or we have already estimated the different loads that will be imposed on our structure, uh, we're going to do a structural analysis. Now, structural analysis is the prediction of the performance of a given structure under prescribed loads and or external effects, such as your um, support movements and temperature changes. Now, what are the performance um, characteristics that we are looking for uh, when we do the structural analysis. So we're looking for first the stress or the stress resultant such as your action forces, your shear forces and bending moments. So basically this is our internal forces that are acting on the structural members and then the deflections of the members and then we have the support reactions. You will see as you go along uh, the discussion for Structural analysis, these are the performance characteristics that we continually um, try to analyze in our structural, um, in our structures. Yeah. All right. So once we've done the structural analysis, the results from this are used to determine if they satisfy the safety and serviceability requirements. So if not, if this is not satisfied, then we're going to make a revision. So the revision that we're going to do involves changing the sizes of our members. And then once you change the member sizes or their dimensions, you're going to repeat the estimation of your loads, of course, because the, um, the weights of your members are going to change due to the change in dimensions. And then you're going to do a structural analysis again. And then you're going to check if the safety and serviceability requirements are satisfied. And once that it is satisfied, we can now move on to your construction phase. And um, that comprises the process um, which we go through when we encounter structural engineering products. Okay, so on to the second part of our video where we will be discussing the different classification of your structures. Now, the first thing that we need to discuss first is the different structural elements or the different structural members that composes our uh, structural system. So we have three different 
um, common types of suction elements that we use in our um, suction system. So the first one is our tie rods or our bracing struts. Uh, these elements are subjected to tensile forces and they are usually slender in size. So typical cross sections of our tie rods are here. So we have a rod or a bar. We can also use um, some um, angle bars or some channel bars uh, to be used as your tie rods. The next structural element would be our beams. So our beams are typically your straight horizontal members. Uh, these primarily carry your vertical loads. They are usually classified according to the way they are supported. So uh, we could uh, we have a figure here. So this one is your simply supported beam. This is supported by a hinge and a roller on both ends or on each end. And then this one is a cantilevered beam. So this one has a fixed support on one end. And then we have a fixed supported beam where it has a fixed support on both ends. And then we have a continuous beam uh, where it spans um, it has multiple spans and multiple um, supports. So these um, elements or members, social members, are primarily designed to resist your bending moments. All right? uh, the third one is our columns. So these are um, typically your straight vertical members. They resist your actual compressive loads. So this is a sample of our column. So the loading is um, placed actually on our columns. But we also have something that is called your beam columns, where it not only um, resists your axial loads, it also resists some bending moment. So when that occurs, what we call this element, your beam column. All right? So onto our different structural systems. So your suction system is just a combination of your suction elements and the materials from which they are composed of. So um, the first one is our trusses. So your trusses is constructed from long and slender elements. It is used, it uses less materials to support your loads. Um, the elements, the different elements are arranged in a triangular fashion. So due to this arrangement, the loads that cause the truss to bend are converted into a tensile and compressive per compressive forces sorry, in our members. If you remember your statics of rigid bodies where we did some truss analyses, you'd know that each member is either subjected to a tensile or compressive force um, if it's not a zero force member, right? So we have two types of trusses. The first one is your planar truss. Um, your planar trusses um, are rich where members are in the same plane. And then we have your plane trusses. This one is a three-dimensional um, or three-dimensional structure. Siya. All right. So the next structural system that we have is the cable and arches. So cables support their loads in tension while our arches support their loads under compression. Let me just move this so that you can see the figure. Yeah. Great. So arches support their load in compression. So for the cables, these are usually used to support um, long span bridges. And then for the arches, man, this is also used um, in bridges. It can also be used in dome roofs and in masonry wall openings. So the difference lang is yung ating, or the difference is our arches are rigid. While of course our, our cables are pretty much flexible, right? Uh, the next social system that we have is the frames, which is I think something that you would usually encounter in this subject. So its members are subjected to internal axial shear and moment loadings. And then we have, lastly, we have our surface structures. All right, so our surface structures, um, they have a small thickness compared to its other dimensions. 
It is com it comprises of thin plates or shells. It supports their loads in tension or compression. So this is a sample of our dome. Um, structural analysis of your surface structures, such as your domes, will not be covered under this um, course since it can be pretty complicated and is usually covered in your graduate school studies. All right, um, your frames is composed of your different elements such as your your beams and your columns. So the most typical uh, structural systems that we will encounter in this course would be your frames and then your beams, of course, and then you have your trusses and then you have your cables and arches. All right. So that's it for the introduction, introduction, introduction of, um, structural analysis for the course structural theory. So thank you for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one.